Paul's been hitting us, know who you are, know who you are, know who you are. Now in verses 12 through 14, Paul says, be who you are. Act like who you are. Live like who you are. Christianity, folks, isn't making a new start. It isn't getting a a new lease on life, a new start. It is a new life. So here's what Paul didn't say. Paul didn't say, become who you are. He said, be who you already are. You see, when you were justified, you died to sin. You became alive in Christ. You're free from sin. You're buried with Christ, raised to walk in newness of life. It is therefore now not you who live, but Christ who lives in you. Know who you are. It's not, it's not don't become who you are. You are already that person. Just be who you are. We're not human becomings. We're human beings, okay? Just be who you are. And so uh, Paul said, don't let sin reign in your mortal, mortal body to obey its lust. Now, now he's, he's putting it on you, folks. You've got to decide. I'm free from sin, but am I going to get in a cage with it and play with it? I, I've been redeemed. I'm a citizen of a different country. But am I going to go back and visit and get me a hotel and stay a while and live it up a little bit? I've got to decide that, right? I mean, it talks about my lust. My, my, he, he talks about our lust. Don't, don't let it reign in you so you obey its lust. He's talking about our desires and our passions. And here, here's one of the surefire ways that you can tell. Am I redeemed? Well, listen, does that mean you're not going to sin? No, we've already talked about that. You're going to commit sins, but here's the deal. Does your attitude about sin change? Because if you're redeemed, you're going to start hating sin. I mean, it doesn't mean that sin's not going to be fun, right? If sin wasn't fun, who would do it, right? Sin's going to be fun, but it means that you start hating sin. You know, you, you, start, you start absolutely abhorring it. You want to mortify it because, number one, it hurts your walk with Christ and it dishonors Christ. And so you begin to, to hate sin and because that, that's why he talks about don't let it make you obey its lusts, right? Change your, your, your attitude. And then, uh, you know, what we need to understand, and we talked about these big, big words, right? Justification, sanctification. We talked about all these, you know, words, and and we're not going to shy away from those because we don't want you to be remedial Christians. We want you to understand. We want you to know who you are so you can be who you are. But we always like to review because we want to help you get it. And so sanctification, remember, I mean, I'm sorry, justification is a legal term that means just as if I'd never sinned. It, It means that I'm now righteous before God. That doesn't mean I always do righteous things. It means my standing before God is righteous. I I was guilty of sin. And God, even though I was guilty, pardoned me. He justified me, right? It's a legal term. I am now right with God, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did, right? That's why I'm right with God. And justification is a moment. It happened in the past. At a moment, I was justified. It's once for all. It's done. I'm right with God. And, and, And so that happens in a moment. Sanctification is a word that means I'm becoming like Christ. I'm growing in the image of Christ. I'm becoming more like Christ, right? Now, that doesn't happen in a moment. That happens over a lifetime, right? It's progressive. So when we start talking about justification, it's monergistic. In other words, justification is all God because I can't earn it. You see, that's what, a, that's what religion was invented for, right? I mean, people, know, everybody knows, man, something's wrong. I'm not connected to God. I'm not right. And then all of a sudden, man, we invent, you've got to do this, and you've got to do this. We can't earn salvation. It is gr- sola gra- gracia, grace alone, sola fide, faith alone. It's all God. I can't earn it. Monergistic. However, sanctification is synergistic. In other words, what that means is it's in tandem. I can't grow in faith without the grace of God in my life. I can't grow without Jesus, the Holy Spirit, drawing me and imparting, but I also can't grow unless I work really hard at it, okay? I've got a responsibility. I have to get up and I have to decide I'm going to grow in the faith. I'm going to work hard at becoming like Christ. I'm going to stay in the Word. I'm going to serve at church. I'm not going to stay home on Sundays on a regular basis. I'm going to get, I'm going to worship. I'm going to be involved in small group. I'm going to, I'm going to share my faith. I'm going to serve. I have to work hard at becoming like Christ, right? Because it's easy to be slothful as a Christian. And Paul said, look, it, it, you have to work. In, 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 in Philippians, that's why Paul said you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You don't work to get salvation, but you work because you are saved, 
right? And so, so what he's talking about here in verses 12 through 14 is he's talking about you working hard to not let sin reign in your mortal body. That's a decision that you have to make every day of your life. He says, don't let sin reign in your bodies to be used as instruments of unrighteousness or sin, but as in, let your members of your bodies be used as, uh, uh, for righteousness, right? 